thank you, you for sparing some time. So um, my group and I, we've prepared a few questions that we wanted to ask you related to the work you do in your field. So um, could you please tell us a bit about yourself, some of the past experiences that you've had um, in your jobs? Okay. So um, I was born and grew up in Switzerland, mm -hmm. and um, I'm a Swiss secretary. So that's where I did most of my training, at least initially. Yeah. And uh, in terms of uh, work experience, I mainly worked in the pensions area in Switzerland. I see. And then I did a PhD, and um, and then went into academia, mm -hmm. and I went to Australia. I um, I, maybe I should have said I, I did some consulting in Switzerland as well. Um, so when, when I moved to Australia, I became a full-time academic yeah. um, and at some point I moved to Canada and I've done some consulting in Canada as well as being an academic. Then I moved back to Australia mm -hmm. and um, that's where I am now. I see. So sir, n not a lot of people actually really understand uh, the role of actuaries and what they do. So could you please explain to us some of the key roles of an actuary? I suppose um, one of the key roles is to make sense out of uh, com complicated modeling. Often these models may, may be complicated, so you've got some technical skills that are required for that. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the major role of the actuary is actually help people understand that. Yeah. It's one of the strengths of actuaries um, and why, why they're so respected is mm -hmm. that they can, they can do that stuff, but then they can actually explain it in a way that people understand it. Mm -hmm and can make sense out of it and, and, and this actually supports decision making. Yep. The other thing is that actuaries are good technically but they, they have this business awareness that allows them to have that discussion with people who need, who need to understand that, that, that modeling. So. so you did mention that um, there are a few essential skills that are necessary in the specific roles of an actuary. Mm -hmm. So what would you reckon some of the really essential skills are that an actuary would need in his or her field? Okay. I think you need really good an analytical skills and problem solving skills. Yeah. You need to be happy and want to sit down and model things. Yeah. And, and you need, normally I think you, you need to like numbers. If you don't <laughs> like numbers, that's not a good start. <laughs> but but it's, it's a necessary, let's say, skill but not sufficient one uh -huh. because you can you do the modeling you sit down yeah. but then what really will make a difference is your ability to make sense out of what you're doing and to have to be able to reasonable to do a reasonableness check of your results and communicate them in a way that's useful to your client mm -hmm. but whether it's an internal client or an external client yeah if you do a wonderful thing in your corner but no one can understand it and you mm -hmm. can't communicate it, then it's not useful. Yeah, I see. So, um, so th there's and and to do that, well, you need good communication skills, but you and you need to understand where they are coming from as well. So you mm -hmm. need that business awareness and this awareness of, of society in general. What what, yeah. what is it? What is the issue? So be able to be curious about someone's issue, mm -hmm. find out what you need to do the modeling, do the modeling, and then support their decision making. So it's a, it's a very broad skills and people think that it's just maths, but mm -hmm. uh, well maybe it will, might get you a graduate job, but you'll never really go very far if you're just good at maths. What would you reckon some of the biggest challenges are in this, um, in this field that you've probably faced or um, graduates will be facing in the future? So you mean the profession in general? The profession in general, yeah. Yeah, I think I think this a big challenge now, a big big disruptor mm -hmm. is the technology. I see. So it's both a, a, a risk and an opportunity. Actuaries, if if you think about it, actuaries were amongst the first in professions to really specialize in making sense out of data. Yeah. Centuries ago, they had they collected data and they're trying to do some modeling and, mm -hmm. and infer information about it, so you mm -hmm. can manage risk. Yeah. Um, so in a way that they're really good at that and, and what they're really good at as well is then communicate well with, with, with a range of different stakeholders. Yeah. But now that with, with, with the increasing level of data and technology, uh, there's a risk that people won't necessarily understand the value of, of, of the actuarial skill set because you can, maybe you can hire a data scientist out of computer science yeah. 
and they can do a, a whole range of stuff with the data. So, what what is what is the the value proposition of being an actuary on top of that? And and I think that that the, the profession should not want to try and, and be everything because yeah. you can't be everything. And they, they should focus on on this ability to actually translate results in. in in a useful way and support the decision making. People often um, associate actual sciences as a purely business related subject um, an area of field. So would, what would you say some of the key aspects are that relates actual sciences as a study of science? All right, so um, <clears throat> that's, that's an interesting question. Uh, I think actual studies is really at the intersection between um, statistics and mathematics which is more of an exact science yep. and business which is more of a social science so mm -hmm. maybe explaining the difference um, the, the exact science is you know you take something you drop it you drop it you know it's going to fall on the floor and it's mm -hmm. always going to happen uh, at least we assume that is so mm -hmm. so it's an exact science you can model exactly how much time it's going to take to hit the floor yeah uh, Whereas with social science, you're actually m modeling or trying to understand the behavior of human beings, which is not always predictable. Yeah. Right? So um, uh, it's not an exact science. Yeah. You can try and build models and, and try to understand what's going on and you can assume that they behave rationally, but often they don't. Yeah. Uh, so it's not an exact science. So actuarial studies combine those two things. It's very inter interdisciplinary from that perspective because it mm -hmm. takes, it borrows techniques from exact science yeah. and applies them to social science issues. And there's a blend of, of, of issues. I mean, if you think of, of managing the risk of a policy, some aspects are actually not exact. Right? Mm -hmm. Will the people buy the policy? Will they stop the policy? Um, uh, 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 are they trying to game? Um, is there adverse selection? Mm -hmm. um, so th there's a behavioral aspect there and, and things that are not exact. And also, you know, um, um, how much will they exercise? If you think of a health cover, how much will they exercise? Will they start smoking? Will it, you know, that's mm -hmm. not exact. Uh, but on the other hand, if you think of, of uh, the cover of, of uh, home insurance, yeah. then um, um, highly relevant uh, um, aspect is storm risk or floods or and th these these are these are natural events mm -hmm. and and this is more on the, on the natural on, on the exact science side mm -hmm. doesn't mean we know how to model them for sure mm -hmm. but yeah. but you know they can build really scientific like science models for yeah. those things and you need to combine those two yeah. and it's interesting to note that if you look at the the in the world maybe half of the actuarial schools sit in the business school and, and the other half have sit in, within the mathematics and statistics department. Yeah. And, and, and the reason is it's, you know, you could classify in one or the other. I see. Sir, thank you so much for speaking to us. Um, my team has actually also um, incorporated a really uh, silly question that they wanted to ask you in the interview, but I, I actually postponed it to a bit later. Um, they did want to have an icebreaker kind of question where they wanted to ask you if you could be an ice cream, what flavored ice cream would you be? Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you could use probably some actuarial, um, you know, technical skills and incorporate it into making a probable decision out of that. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. I suppose I'd, I'd ask my kids what they like. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>